If you've clicked on this video, you've likely gotten frustrated in the past of having to tweak your photos to get them perfectly to your liking by using external software, when you'd rather just keep it in Procreate, do those minor tweaks, and then move right along. So in this video, I'm going to show you three enhancements you can do all within Procreate to bring your photos to life and avoid dealing with any other software. I've got three different images so we can walk through and you can kind of see how we apply different things depending on what the image looks like. And I'll walk you through those three enhancements that can really bring a photo to life without having to take it into a different software. So this first image, when you look at it, you just wanna kind of evaluate what's going on. That way you can make your decisions. So for me, I feel like it's just too dark. I feel like the color is balanced. I've got nice pinks and yellows and whites. I don't feel like there's any color that's kind of giving me a haze to the image, but it does feel a little too moody and too dark. So I wanna brighten it up. I've got two of these here so you can see the original on the right side and then what we're doing to it on the left side with our enhancements. For the first one, we're going to use a curves enhancement. And when you think that something needs to be brighter, usually your mind would go to, okay, hue, saturation, and brightness, which is found in your magic wand. Of course, why wouldn't you? It says brightness in it. But actually the curves is a better choice because curves can enhance both brightness and contrast at the same time, which if you've ever used hue, saturation, and brightness before, when you move the brightness slider, it actually kind of washes out the image while it's brightening it. So I always visit curves before I visit that one when I need to brighten up an image. So let's head to curves and the curves palette can be a little intimidating at first because we've got the straight line, we've got little colors down here, then we've got gamma, red, green, and blue. So red, green, and blue is your RGB. So those are the separate colors. If you want to affect how the red, green, or blue is appearing in your image, you would select each one individually. I personally just keep it with gamma and keep it nice and simple. This straight line is called your curve graph. And on the left side represents your shadows, the middle is your midtones, and then the right side are your highlights. So if I tap and create a node, and then I move that node up, it's going to make everything brighter. When I move it down, it's going to make my highlights darker. Obviously, I wanna make my highlights a little bit brighter, and this will also brighten up my midtones. If I come closer to the middle, all the way over here is brightening up my shadows, which obviously we need our shadows to be dark because they're supposed to be dark, so we can come closer to the middle. So now I am enhancing both my midtones and my highlights when I'm right between there. So we just wanna make sure we're not going to blow out our image while we do that. A very popular curve that you may have heard of before for this curve graph is called the S curve. So a really easy way to make a photo adjustment without having to know much about the curves palette is just to make an S curve. But the S curve, you're going to get a lot of very dramatic results very quickly if you make anything that looks like an S here. So by creating an S, we wanna drop another node where our shadows are. This top node would go up, the bottom node would go down. So now you can see we're kind of getting an S. So that's what the S curve is. It's going to add a ton of contrast to your image and it's also going to brighten up your brightest areas of your image. This becomes super intense because by default, the saturation of your color is just going to like skyrocket here. Obviously we don't want this image to look like this. So we need to be less dramatic with how we make our S curve. It's okay to make your shadows a little more intense. I actually like that. And then I'm just going to see what feels really good without blowing out my color where my highlights become white instead of a color. Like over here, that's becoming blown out now. So I'm always aware of where my highlights are getting too bright. So I definitely wanted my image to be brighter. So I'm going to move it closer to my midtone range than my highlight range. And now I have a better balance of my highlights and I've increased my contrast a little bit too. So that feels good. I'm just going to leave it like this. We've got a few areas where the saturation is just a little extreme. So when this happens, I go and head into my hue, saturation, and brightness, and I can just reduce my saturation down a little bit so it feels a little more realistic and natural, and that feels really good. I can also increase my brightness a little bit. I mentioned before that it can wash it out a bit, so just be aware of that. And if it does feel like it's washing out too much, you can always go back to your curves. There's nothing wrong with that. And we can just drop a node where our shadows are and create a little bit more contrast in our image. And you can see right away, this is our original. This is what we've adjusted. And it's much more workable depending on what type of illustration you'd like to make that's based on it. Let's move on to the next image and we can cover our third enhancement, which is color balance. Here's the image that I've chosen for the color balance and I'm sure you can tell why. It is 
very blue. It is way too blue. So I'm just going to select the one on the left again and we're going to adjust it and talk about how we're adjusting it to make it more workable for our illustrations. So with this one selected, I'm going to come up here and choose color balance. Whenever you create a color balance adjustment, you're affecting either the highlights, the midtones, or the shadows, or all three. And in order to isolate each one, you just want to tap on this little sunshine and you can select which one you'd like. I always personally start with the midtones. I find it to be the most dramatic result for me and then I move on to shadows and highlights if I feel like that's still necessary. So I'm going to select the midtones. It's feeling a little too blue here or a lot too blue. So I'm looking where blue is and cyan because both of these live in the blue family and we're going to do the opposite. So we'll add a little yellow and a little red to them. So let's start here first and this is another one of those times where you want to go in very tiny increments because it will be very dramatic if you go all the way up. So as I'm adding yellow you can see it's starting to warm up compared to the original and then I'm going to grab a little bit of red and this will also warm it up and at the same time reduce the coolness of the image that was coming from kind of the blue haze that was on it. That's feeling really nice and let's see if we move our magenta and our green sometimes I'll just slide them to see what will happen. I want to keep it right where it is. I think it's fine. So right in the middle is your neutral point. Now let's head into shadows because all these dark areas are also feeling a little too green and a little too blue. So I'll hit the sunshine again and this time I'm going to select shadows and now I will slide this a little bit to the yellow. I actually think it's got enough yellow right now, so maybe I'll keep that neutral and then we'll move this to the red a little bit. And that feels more natural and we can also adjust this one. So I'm adding a little bit of magenta to reduce the feeling of the green but it definitely feels more natural now. It is feeling a little bit saturated, so I'm going to reduce the saturation and then we'll add a curves adjustment. So I don't think I need to do anything to the highlights, so I'm going to move on. I'm going to deselect to commit those changes, come back to the magic wand. I'm going to reduce the saturation just a little bit, add a little bit of brightness to it, so 53%, and then return to my curve so I can still have a little bit of extra contrast and brightness. So I'll add some brightness to my midtones and my highlights, and then a node down here to increase the contrast of my shadows. And my saturation still feels nice in there. So as you compare the two, this one definitely feels more realistic than this one, so I'm ready to move forward with whatever I need it for. I've got one more example if you'd like to see how all of these enhancements work together, so I'll close this up and turn on the last one. You can see it's very, very dark. So you can probably already guess what we need to do first, and that's a curves adjustment. So I'll come into the magic wand, go into curves, and we will drop a node right into the midtones and highlights area. And I don't think I need any contrast, so I'm actually going to avoid dropping a node where my shadows are because that's part of the issue with this image is the quantity of shadows and the overall darkness of the image. I'm going to come into my hue, saturation, and brightness. I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit, so 52%. And I think my saturation is actually fine in this. I can actually increase it a little bit to 52, 53%, and that's all set. And if I look at this, I do get a little bit of blue in this area where my shadows are. So I can hit the magic wand, go to color balance, select my shadows and just reduce the cyan by adding a little bit of warmth with red and a little bit of warmth with yellow. I don't wanna to get too crazy with yellow because I already feel like I've got a lot of yellow right here. So I'm going to focus mostly on how much red I wanna add and that feels good. So that was a quick adjustment to this photo using all three enhancements. So don't be afraid to use your curves. I use that one probably more than any other one, but then you can use the other ones in tandem to correct your photo to make it usable. This is just one of the tips coming to you in my brand new course, Mixed Media Florals and Procreate. If you click the link right in the video description, you can be notified as soon as that course goes live. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.